Welcome everybody, my name is Misha and today I'm going to be your host for this video. Essentially, this is a longer video, but I cover everything. We're gonna go over how to start, how to lay out your tile, how to miter a niche, which is pretty sick, super trendy. Uh, I'll show you how to then grout, caulk the corners. I'll make a mistake, I'll show you how to fix that mistake, and I'll talk about my pricing, literally, for this job that you're going to see in the video, I'll tell you exactly how much I charge and I'll kind of tell you how to charge for the niche itself because miter ch prices are a little bit different, all right? If you guys are stuck and you're doing the whole YouTube circle of trying to find the best contractors to watch or whatever, you just don't know where to start, you don't have a friend that you can call, DM your boy over here on Instagram and I help you for free. DM me with a picture though, DM me with a picture, be like, how do I start, where do I start? What do I do with this situation? And I'll help you out. Uh, don't pay for any of these courses. All the information is here on YouTube. Um, hopefully this video helps you out. If it gives you a little bit of value, and if you watch this video for more than five, five minutes, you have to subscribe. If not, tomorrow a bird is going to poop on your head. Now we have those two side pieces that have to kind of miter in. And here's what we're gonna do. Basically we have our tile, the same, damn bird. Hey, hey. No. All right, so we have a, uh, All right, so we're getting ready to uh, lay out our shower and our tub is actually a quarter of an inch at a level. So here's what you do, because I want to make sure that I have a really nice grout line here that we can caulk. Um, I'm starting at my lowest point and that is our lowest point here. As you can see, our laser is right at the top of that tile and then it progressively goes up, 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 up to about quarter of an inch here. So I'm going to get my tile in here like this and then start marking it to see what we need to do to cut it off in order in order to do that essentially here's what you got to do i'll show it on this piece you take your piece of tile just like so and then flip it upside down so then your bottom is now becoming your top just like so you see i taped these uh little guys here just to kind of keep the spacing so then i'm going to mark that and then basically to about here is where my zero is going to be okay and then we're going to go to this one see same thing you then want to grab this flip it just right upside down and basically we're going to spend a little bit of time on our first row because then we don't have to worry about ledger board we don't have to worry about any any anything else and we can just start start tiling this wall and we don't have to come back and finish this up tomorrow so now Right on the laser line, I'm going to run that, and then run on the right on the laser line. Go run that. Oh, my back just cracked pretty good. Um, all right, that same thing with the last one here. Oops, I didn't take those guys down. I'm leaving at the bottom with the tile tile this size. I'm leaving eighth of an inch gap. Um, so again. Skadoosh, right on the laser line, and then skadoosh, right on the laser line, just like so. Bang. And if you can see our pattern here, basically we're going to have a large piece of tile right in the middle, full piece. It's going to go one, and then the next one will end just right about there which will give us just enough room to make our miter and then miter in. And then um, the next piece will be like in here and then kind of continue. So essentially our niche is going to be just one piece of tile like, whoo, like pressed in. It's gonna look so, so sick. And then this piece of tile, you're gonna go, go here, miter in. So the veins whoo, whoo, will miter in too. It's gonna look amazing. I'll show you that in a couple steps. But basically I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time here, get my first row done and then start tiling up. 
All right, so here we go. I'm telling you, spend your time on that first row. If you do it nice and, and right, everything else is so easy. I, I, I promise you. Yo, apron, clutch, saves your clothes. So I'm using Multimax Light Fin Set here, half inch trowel. I pre-cut all of these pieces of tile and dry fit it to make sure they all work out nice. And then bang, you put your thin set on the wall, put it in, done. All right, so we're gonna hop outside and get our miter done, the bottom piece of tile. If you guys wanna see how to miter a tile, check out this video right here, I'll link it, and then uh, come back to this one. All right, so we're gonna come right back inside and finish up our third row. So that middle tile is mitered in, so then it can kind of make that turn. You want it to stick out at least five eighths inch, three quarters safe of it to make that turn. Then you're done, you just basically finish this up and then we can start working on the two pieces that are coming in into the niche on the sides. All right, so now we have our bottom miter. Now we gotta figure out our two side miters that have to kind of come in. So this is our 17 and a half piece, 17 and a half piece. And this is the remainder of that because I wanna get these grout lines or these kind of veins to actually bend in. It's gonna look, you know, it's a little detail that kind of looks cool. So before I do that, what I wanna do is uh, I'm going to hit this edge and this edge with my polishing pad just really lightly then clean it up with uh my ruby uh like sanding sponge to to basically dress the the edge to make it like a factory edge before i miter then once i do that i can miter both of those so then like the actual miter itself is super clean that's what we're gonna do next so I encourage everybody to learn how to miter. I think especially around a niche or a shelf kind of thing, it looks beautiful. I don't do it around curbs anymore or uh, like transitions, or anything like that. I just think it's not as strong, but it elevates a niche so much and you can charge way more for that. I'll share you kind of my pricing strategy around that, like in the video down the road. Uh, but if you can see how it looks at the end, you'll be like, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so here we're just finishing up this wall. Again, just have all those pieces pre-cut, trowel it out, assemble it, bang, you're done with that wall. All right, so we're back. So I had these little pieces of wood here just to basically hold up this row when it was drying to make sure it didn't slide down because you know even 16th of an inch down would kind of make it look a little bit off and we're not trying to do that. Um, so these guys come right out then to remove these clips, this is the next day, by the way. I don't know where we are in the video. This is the next day. So to remove the clips, I usually just get a mallet. It's one of these sanded mallets. And literally all you're doing is just knocking them out. Um, during my install, I keep my grout lines, as you can see, like super, super clean. So really there is no issue with these guys getting stuck in there. But sometimes if you're not able to stay clean and there's stuff in your grout lines, then you have to get a box cutter and cut them out. Uh, it's a bit more pain in the butt, so you make sure that as you're installing it, you're using your sponge uh, to do that, all right? Bang, we're done with this, and now we're going to, uh, let's work on this wall. Figure out this wall and see, uh, let's get a tile. All right, so we got to cut out our tub spout. It's supposed to come right out of here. And I'm going to be using my Ruby uh, drill set. I'll link out down below to so you can see where to get one. But here's why I like it. Basically, you have so much control over drilling this, this, this hole. Plus, I've had it for all, over a year, and I've been using this exact same bit for almost a year now, drilling these holes, and they just never go dull because of how efficient the system is. So here's how it works. You you center it right over your X, just like that. Bring this little doohickey here. It's like a suction cup. Put this to the side. Get this suctioned down. Bang, bang, bang. You see that this is right over center. Double check it. Then you take this little pump here and you just pump it. Get the water falling into that hose. And you see now it's spraying out of here. And you just drill it. that hole turned out to be and then I'll show you what it looks like inside I mean that's perfect all right so here we go let's see how we did here bang 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 skadoosh it's got to come up just a little bit but we still have to put a spacer under here so you see what I'm saying laser cut laser 
All right, so we move over to this wall and this one's pretty simple. I only pre-cut my right side. So that's like a, that's a 12 inch piece there because I just took one tile, cut it in half. We basically stuck with this pattern because we were running short on tile and I couldn't just split it. But I think it kind of worked out because the corner pieces are basically the same size. Once I got two pieces in on the right side of there, I slid my Schluter strip in. That's how I end my tile row. Just a metal Schluter strip. It just looks modern and clean and beautiful. So once you do your right side, you measure in your left side because our wall was kind of varying by eighth of an inch. And then you have a nice, perfect wall. I'm really, really happy with that. I don't know if you see like right there, I put two pieces of leveling uh, clips in there to basically hold my bottom piece nice and firm right where it needs to be so that when I put my back piece of tile, it doesn't kind of like push on the other tile and like make it go weird. That's, it helps a lot. I, I always do my sides first when I do my niche and then the back because it gives me that wiggle room around like the edges to like kind of maneuver them and then all you have to do is cut a nice square piece or rectangular piece you can put it right in there so i never have really problem with that and that's my kind of process for it look how nice it comes out this is why mitering is so cool because i mean that just looks clean and and beautiful all right so we got our niche all set we're going to use duct tape here if you use a like, goof off or anything like that, or there's some residue from that, it'll come right off. But you wanna make sure that in these miters, you fill them with your thin set, and then also that you have these little wedges here to make sure that they spaced. We have an eighth of an inch grout line here, here, 16th here, um, basically to allow for that caulking, because we wanna make sure that this thing has really good silicone caulk right in the back. Um, it's going to look really, really nice. But check it out, I mean, I think we just, all right so far tomorrow we just gotta figure out this window and this wall and then we're ready for grout bang all right so it's the next day we're gonna remove the the duct tape here on a polished tile there's no residue left or anything like that i just want to show you really quick basically how to clean up these um these grout lines and the reason i do it this way Right, so the best thing to use to clean out these grout lines because as you can see like I have thin set oozing out of here and I make sure that I did that on purpose because I want this corner to be super supported and there's no air voids in there what you do is you just grab your box cutter and watch what happens when you get really close in here it just comes right out and you do this the next day it's super super simple if you were to wait another day this would suck so make sure that you're coming in the next day to clean this out and really, we're just trying to make room for our grout. We're not trying to clean out the whole corner itself. It's just to basically give enough room to get some grout in there and get the color in. And that's it. And then we're gonna go and do this around the perimeter, sponge it, clean it up, and then we're ready to work on our next wall. All right, so our shower is basically going to end right here. If I was to mimic it exactly to the other side, it would be like that, you know, quarter inch gap. We're not gonna do that, right? So we'll put it right up against the window. I will put a Schluter strip here because the homeowners did say that they're going to replace this window down the road. So I wanna make sure my tile has nothing to do with the window itself. So we'll put a Schluter strip here and then tile right to it. And then on the bottom here, we'll continue with that. I will save this inside the shower because the thing is gonna look a little weird if I just cut it off on one side and not the other. Um, and that's it. So now let's get tiling. So here we are, we're gonna tile our third wall. I'm feeling good, I'm getting ready to freaking blow this thing out of the water, trowel it out, back button my tile, set my next piece, and then I realize that I messed up. All right, so here we are, we got our first row ready to go, and then I'm looking over and I'm like, why is this not matching up? Well, because our tub wasn't level, remember that? So I completely forgot about that, so now, I gotta take all of this off, take the thin set, put it back in the bucket <laughs> essentially, and then get my laser out and then copy over this grout line to make sure that we're, you know, even. It's gonna take me 20 minutes, it's it's a setback, but don't just keep tiling, you know what I'm saying? Like take this back, be a pro, and then start over. So this is might be the most important part of this video just because the more I post on social media, the more I see that people don't show their mistakes, especially like the big pro guys, like they all make mistakes. I promise you, like this was just a like a brain fart, you know, and like I made a mistake, I'll show it to you guys just because 
one, it's more approachable for the industry because like the newer guys or the homeowners DIYing it, like, you know, they might be making mistakes and they're like, oh, I suck at this because I don't see those guys making mistakes. They all do. But it's how do you react to those mistakes? Do you fix them or do you just move on? Make sure you fix them because that's how you become a better pro. All right, so when I'm grouting and it's a 16th of an inch grout line, I want my grout to be mixed a little bit more runny so that I can really pack those grout joints. Because if you mix it too like dense or too thick, then it's really hard to actually you know push them into there. But when you do mix it runnier like this, you have to wait a little bit longer before you start washing it out. That's the only downside to it. All right, so we're grouting, pretty self-explanatory. The only thing you wanna look out for is that those 90 degree turns, the inside 90s, you're not packing those in because we're going to put silicone, grout caulk silicone into those. Uh, anytime I'm grouting, I'm gonna use a damp sponge first, kind of wet, like dampen the tile, and then pack it in with grout. Because then what happens is the grout kind of skates over the tile itself and doesn't leave as much hazing. It's been working for me and that's kind of how I've been doing it. Uh, but I did the whole shower and then washed it off with my grout bucket. All right, so I use one of these grout buckets for when I'm grouting. There's a couple reasons I do that. One, it's a nice flat surface. So when you're kind of, you're washing it out, you're just gliding over the tile itself and you're keeping these grout lines super full. Like, check this out. Um, you're not washing them out. Um, two, what's nice is like, when I'm using this, my hand is still, you know, dry. So when you're doing a big floor or something like that and you have to wash it for like a couple of hours, your hands do get like, kind of messed up from the grout itself. Um, and wearing gloves is annoying because water gets into them. I'll have the link for this down in the description if you guys want to check them out. I think that it's like 35 bucks, so it's a no-brainer. Uh, with this one bucket of water, I was able to wash this entire shower. So it's pretty efficient as well. All right, so this right here is how you avoid any type of hazing is after you wash it, get a towel a dry towel and then just wipe it off the towel basically will collect that water that has the hazing in it all right so the last thing i'm going to do is just grab a dry piece of paper towel and then especially with polished tile and then just clean it up make sure you're focusing on the tile not the grout lines here all right so kind of skip over the grout lines and then clean up the tile and as you can see there's absolutely no haze don't wait too long all the cleaning has to happen as you grouted it within the next hour and a half essentially don't wait till the next day to deal with the haze because then that's kind of when you get in trouble all right okay so we're getting ready to do our inside corners anywhere where you have a change of plane you have to put like a a movement joint and for us that movement joint is going to be in the form of this lattice caulking uh essentially it's a hundred percent um silicone based caulking so it's the same color as our grout but what you're looking for is this submerged use which means that it can be under a wa underwater things like that because newsflash you take a lot of showers you know that area is always wet essentially so you have to use something like this um, i'm going to use a popsicle stick and spray water bottle um, to to install it and i'll show you how to do that next all right so here we are at our last portion of the video and that's essentially to caulk our corners we'll get into pricing in a second but as i'm caulking my corners i want to make sure that i'm filling that gap those voids as much as i can you don't want it just to be on the surface you want that silicone to get in there and provide strength and kind of grab onto the tile on the sides as well um, once you did that then you're going to spray down with a soap bottle mix essentially it's water and dish soap that you added just a squirt of soap uh, shake it up, spray at it. It kind of late lets you skate uh, your popsicle stick a little easier. Use a popsicle stick. It just works so much nicer than any one of those tools. At the end, you can kind of lick your finger and clean it up, and then you're good to go there. Lastly, we just have to clean up our corners, get the caulking into the corners and around the tub. This way, there's never any cracks there, and your shower system will never fail. And this is it. This is all you have to do in order to tile this shower. I'm telling you, you can do it. If you're kind of nervous about it, make sure that you DM me. 
but let's get into the pricing of this job. All right, so let's talk about pricing. It's one of those things that people really look out for in my videos is uh, the pricing itself. And I just wanna let you know that it's like in our area where we live, it's kind of Northern New Hampshire. So it's a little bit of like a rural area, but we do live in like a vacation spot and uh, you know, the towns around here are nice. Um, it's kind of like a middle-class affluent kind of uh, situation here. That, that is important because you do need to know your customer. Um, then we're also, we are kind of in like, like that top 25% of contractors in terms of like our pricing. We definitely are expensive, I think, for our area. So let's get to it. For a niche like this, typically we have a small, medium, large, and then it's either do you Schluter strips or do you miter? Um, if we were to use like, so let's go through those prices. So a small niche will be 500 bucks with miters. Medium niche will be $700, and then a large niche, which is like 48 to 60 inches, will be $1,000 that we charge inside our tiling package. Uh, so this was a medium niche, and we charged $700 for a niche like this. Uh, in terms of the, the shower, walls, and everything like that, materials and tile is included in this price. Uh, also, the demo of this area is included. Um, all in, this was a $4,200 job for the shower area. That's with the niche, that's with the materials, uh, the and the tile, $4,200. And this was 85 square feet. Also with the floor of the bathroom, so our entire package was $5,000 to do the shower, uh, tub area, and the floor. The floor is 40 square feet, and we charged $5,000 for that. And this job took us basically a week uh, to do the tiling portion of this job. We do the whole bathroom essentially, but this portion right here uh, was just a week. So it is good money if you do it. Um, we are booked eight months out from, you know, where, whenever we're talking right now. So we can kind of set our prices and see if people want to take them or not. Um, I think if you're not booked that far out, I wouldn't have those prices, but the point, the goal is to kind of book out a little bit so then you can start experimenting. And the best way to raise your prices is just to do better work and present your company better. Um, people like having us around their house. They like kind of our reviews on Google. They like our social media presence, that whole thing. And I think it all kind of has that Tiffany box effect. So work on your branding of the uh, of your company, work on, on your actual work itself, and then you can set the prices higher. Um, because then people will start referring you to each other and that's kind of how you grow a nice, sustainable business. I hope that this helped. Uh, please comment down below if what I could do better. I do want to do better uh, at educating you guys on this stuff and kind of sharing what I know. And then also I want to learn from you guys. So definitely let me know in the comments what I could do better. If you guys do need help uh, kind of starting up a project or whatever, DM me pictures on Instagram for free. I'm not going to charge anything for anything like this because that's silly to charge. i um, just trying to be, you know, help the community a little bit more. So DM me and I'll help you out. And I hope that I have earned your uh, subscription here, a like and a comment. And uh, that would mean the world to me. Thanks. Have a good day.